This doesn't make any sense. Puberty can often be a confusing time for a young adolescent flowering into manhood. In our last video, we talked a lot about how changes in the teen brain make it so what peers think of them is extremely more important. Now, today we're going to talk a little bit about how the prefrontal cortex develops and how that affects their reasons and emotions. I know you snuck out last night, Morales. Play dumb. Who's Morales? Not that dumb. Now, the question I often hear from adults is, what were they thinking, describing some crazy teen behavior? And the answer is typically, they probably weren't. And there's a reason behind all that also. Stop for a walk helps my pubescent mood swings. Our brains are made up of neurons. They look gray. And as we grow up, more of those neurons get wrapped in this white stuff called myelin. With myelin, neurons can talk to each other about 3,000 times faster. It's like upgrading to fiber optic internet. This process begins in the back of the brain before we're even born. By the time we're teens, it's gone a long way, but it hasn't finished. And the part that develops last is the very front, which happens to be the part of the brain that sort of makes us human. Your frontal cortex is the part of your brain that controls rational thought and reasoning. So when a teenager is confronted with a decision, this rational area is slower at communicating with other parts of their brain. So those other parts end up taking the lead. Especially this one little feisty part, the amygdala. This is our brain's emotional center, and it explains a lot of teen behavior. So you may wonder why your teen is suddenly a lot more grumpy with you, a lot more upset, seem to get a lot triggered a lot quicker. Well, it has a lot to do with the amygdala calling the shots. Groot, put that thing away. Now, I don't want to tell you again. Groot. I am Groot. Whoa! Oh, wait. Hey! You got some acorns on you, kid. Ever since you got a little sap, you're a total Now keep it up, and I'm gonna smash that thing to pieces! Now there's a tendency among some parents to either try and appease them, to make them happy more often. Would that stabilize your pubescent mood swings? Uh-huh, absolutely. Or to get upset with them and yell at them all the time. It doesn't feel like I have a choice You don't! Now both of those are not really good ideas. Kids often during their teen years need to be retaught emotional intelligence so they know how to handle their emotions. And that does best when we model it for them. Although I know that is the hardest to do during this age. Just shut up! Fire! That's it. Go to your room. Now. Foot is down. The foot is down. Yeah! Good job, gentlemen. That could have been a disaster. While teens at this age may think that they're older than they are, or that they know more than they do. Buddy. It's a puberty thing. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I'm not going through puberty. I did, but I'm done. I'm a man. It's partly because their prefrontal cortex is not there to remind them of things that they don't know or the fact that of potential consequences. <laughs> but that basic part of the brain that um, gives us uh, strategies and organizing and perhaps uh, warns us of potential consequences isn't fully on board yet. So they're gonna need your help even more than ever during this time period. So it's very important at this time to keep a very positive base of power, which includes, uh, if you haven't seen my videos on base of power, then make sure you go back and look at it. But I talk about having a five to one ratio of good versus bad things. So make sure you have a lot of positive interactions with your teen. So that those times that you need to teach or correct, that that can will be handled in a much better way. Miles' dad shows that into the Spider-Verse when he corrects him, but then quickly follows it up with a bid to connect with him. Seriously, dad. Walking would have been fine. You can walk plenty on Saturday when you peel those stickers you off. You saw that? I don't know if that was me, Dad. And the two from yesterday on Clinton. Yeah, those are me. So, look at that. Another new coffee shop. You see that, Miles? Totally, yeah. You see that one? What's that one called? Foam party. Foam party? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. And everyone is just lining up. You see that, Miles? I see it. Is that a coffee shop or a disco? <laughs> Dad, you're old. Now, it may often seem that your bid to connect with a teen may seem useless, but it's still extremely necessary, and you may see from time to time that they still need you. Listen, um, down there, that was... I, I mean, I owe you... Okay!
I look forward to working with you. <laughs> yeah, 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 me too, I guess. But I, I don't approve of your methods, but uh, we're just gonna have to agree to disagree. Thank you for your bravery tonight. I love you. <laughs> Wait, what? Now this is part two of my teen series. I'm going to be doing some more here in the future also. So make sure you subscribe and like. And also check out my website, uh, jeffbrownsclassroom.com, to check out some more of the videos. Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. Have fun. Peace out, my homies.